Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this afternoon sessions of the Motor Summit 2020. I hope everybody had the time and opportunity to have some lunch and to take some fresh air. And by fresh air, I think we're right on the topic because we're going to have a session now regarding fans. Moving air is one of the main topics here. The first contribution will have two presenters. It's dealing with efficient fan systems, and we're starting with Tim Matheson. He's a principal engineer at AMCA, the Air Movement and Control Association. He has a bachelor degree in mechanical engineering, and he has over 30 years of uh, experience in designing and testing fans at Greenhack and other institutions. The second contribution comes from Michael Ivanovich, who is the Senior Director of Global Affairs in AMCA, and he uh, also holds a quite numerous uh, position as researchers and scientists at different uh, institutions in the U.S., and is active in regulations involving the U.S. Department of Energy and California Energy Commissions. So I'm looking forward to today's presentation called Efficient Fan Systems. Hi, I'm Michael Ivanovich, Senior Director of Global Affairs for Air Movement and Control Association International, or AMCA International. And I'm Tim Matson, Principal Engineer with AMCA International. We're going to talk about it, efficient fan systems and how the fan energy index is being used to help save energy. Now, Michael and I have done a number of webinars about how the fan energy index works, but lately we've been asked more about why certain things were done with this metric. And so I'll share more about the underlying concepts and some of the reasoning behind it. And then Michael will give a brief update on its use in codes and standards in the US. We call the fan energy index a wire to air metric. You may call it an EMDS metric. Same concept, just different terms. But what makes FEI unique from other energy efficiency metrics is that it can be calculated at any duty point, any airflow and pressure point within the fan's operating range. It's not just a single metric applied to a fan model. So if the fan is available at multiple speeds like this one, there's a whole map of FEI values shown here as lines of constant FEI. As I get into the underlying concepts, I'm reminded of a quote from a manufacturing expert who studies labor efficiency. He says, perhaps what you measure is what you get, but more likely what you measure is all you'll get. And, and a truly awful and bizarre example of this was uh, with the US Environmental Protection Agency and, uh, and the Volkswagen scandal. But in a much less diabolical way, it also held true for motor manufacturers with regulation at various IE levels. Those who hesitated to redesign their more efficient products down to the minimum allowable efficiency levels saw their sales decline due to excessive costs compared to their competitors. So when the U.S. Department of Energy proposed a regulation for fans based on their peak energy efficiency, fan manufacturers responded with a resounding no. They said, why should we judge a fan by its peak efficiency when it never or rarely is ever applied at that point? Why should we remove products from the market that can actually consume less energy than products left on the market? And why should we go through the effort this huge effort of regulating fans if the result fails to actually save energy. So as I get into the uh, underlying concepts, one of the most significant ones is it's made clear when you simply look at efficiency curves. Induction motors on the left have a very constant efficiency from 50 to 100% load. So if you regulate the efficiency of a motor at full load and it's applied anywhere between 50 and 100% full load, you will get what you measure. And motors aren't normally applied below 50% nameplate. In fact, when you're sizing a motor, the least expensive motor size is one with a nameplate power that exactly matches the required load, which is the same load used for efficiency regulation. Again, you get what you measure. If you contrast this to a fan efficiency curve on the right, the best efficiency point occurs high on the fan curve. More importantly, the shape of the efficiency curve is steep and, and actual efficiency as applied depends greatly on the position of the, on the fan curve. And even more important, the lowest cost option, 
the smallest size available will be furthest away from its peak efficiency. So you see when designers select fans for a given application, they almost always have a choice between four or five or more sizes that will achieve the same results. But unlike motors, the product cost is inversely related to the power consumed. Now this is clearly a product that needs regulation, but any regulation that leads to increased cost will obviously make this situation even worse. No matter what regulations are put into place, there's still a single person tasked with deciding which fan gets placed in a given application. And for commercial fans, this person literally has the ability to cut the consumed energy in half based on the fan selection. So fan manufacturers teamed up with experts from the DOE to develop this FEI metric that not only encourages more efficient fan designs, but also directly addresses this important subject of fan selection. So here's the same concept shown in a, just a simpler way. For a given fan duty, the smallest size fan is the lowest first cost and is the least efficient selection. So we chose to focus on this person, the engineer making the fan selections. He's, ult he's ultimately responsible for weighing the first cost versus energy consumption of the fan. And fan manufacturers were involved in developing FEI. And the AMCA is all about leveling the playing field for fan manufacturers. So one of the main goals for FEI was to be technology neutral. We didn't want the metric to give any technology an advantage over another. This, this concept applied first to fan types. The same metric is used for all fan types, from a low power prop fan to a, an airfoil centrifugal fan. So this enables and even encourages the use of more efficient fan types for a given application. The substitution. The fan with the higher FEI value will have the lower power. But in order for a more efficient product to be substituted, it must actually save energy. An airfoil centrifugal fan is much more efficient than a prop fan. But in a warehouse ventilation application, a low pressure application, the prop fan is the right fan for the job. In order for the airfoil fan to use the same amount of energy and therefore have the same FEI, the size has got to be so large that it would weigh six times that of the prop fan. It would cost seven times as much. And I tried to draw these to scale. FEI is based on consumed power for a given duty point, regardless of the fan type. We wanted it to be motor technology neutral as well. You know, one of the tools that regulators can use to impact technology is the use of default values. If they want a certain technology to move off the market, or if they don't currently have regulations covering this technology, they can assign it some low default energy or efficiency values and uh, discourage its use. But fan manufacturers go to market with a variety of different motor technologies. So they wanted FEI to be motor technology neutral. And this was by far one of our greatest challenges. The US DOE wanted us to use some low default values with some of these motor options, but fan manufacturers resisted. For time's sake, I'm just gonna look at one of these options, the regulated induction motors. ISO 12759 part two, which was modeled after AMCA 207, specifically addresses regulated induction motors with or without pulse width modulated VFDs. What we observed was if the motor efficiency was regulated to IE2 or IE3 levels, motor manufacturers designed their motors right to the lower end of these grades. So regardless of which brand you choose, you'll get the same efficiency. With this standard, we were looking for typical efficiencies, not some D-rated values that would penalize fan manufacturers. So with the help of some motor manufacturers, we were, to able, we were able to create simple models of efficiency versus load that could easily be incorporated into our fan selection software. 
We made sure it covered up to 150% nameplate power since many fan applications have motors in the Airstream and take advantage of this cooling. And for the variable speed option, we made sure it covered up to 150% of synchronous speed since so many of our applications require that. So how did we do with this standard? Well, we have extremely close agreement with the efficiencies published by the Motor Systems Tool, a very useful tool put out by EMSA. Here I have shown three different size IE3 motors with part load efficiency values, and you can see the correlation is excellent. And here's the comparison for IE3 motors combined with VFDs. Again, almost an exact match. We've been asked, why not use the reference PDS values from IEC 61800-9-2? And I have shown those values in here, uh, in this graph in red for the smallest size. And these are clearly not typical values and uh, that we need, they're not typical values and we need typical values to ensure technology neutrality. And that's just not their purpose in this standard. So how does FEI compare to other energy efficiency metrics? And remember, you get what you measure. Well, any peak efficiency metric, whether it's FEG or FMEG, will have about the same, if not exactly the same value for each of these fan sizes, since they're the same model. And this happens to be a very efficient model. So any of these sizes will pass based on any peak efficiency metric. But FEI is focused on the decision maker. In this example of simply picking the fan size, there's about a 75% difference in power consumed. And the FEI value varies by 75%, uh, perfect correlation. What about EEI, the Energy Efficiency Index described in IEC 61800-9-1? Now this is not a peak efficiency metric. Instead, it uses a weighted load versus time profile appropriate for the specific product combined with the efficiency at each of these loads. Well, the load profile for each of these fans, since they're all the same model, will be identical, at least when adjusted for size. So while we don't know what the EEI value will be, I just put in a value of three, we know that it'll be exactly the same for each of these sizes. Again, not very useful for this decision maker who has so much control over energy consumed over the life of this product. And just for curiosity, how does the FEI metric compare to FMEG in terms of the level of efficiency required? To answer this, since FEM FMEG is only calculated at the best efficiency point, which is generally at maximum speed, you would need to determine the FEI at the best efficiency point. And you could do this for individual fan models, knowing their airflow and pressure at the best efficiency point. And then you could compare the FEI to the FMEG. And I just have the FMEG shown here for tier one and tier two levels. So just to get a glimpse of what that study might look like, I made some assumptions. I assume the pressure values at the best efficiency point, because if you fix that pressure, the rest is just math. So for the axials and mixed flow fans on the left, I assumed a pressure of 1,000 pascals. And for the centrifugal fan on the right, I assumed 2,000 pascals. If we were to base this on a survey of actual fans, these colored lines would be clouds of points around these lines. But based on this simple assumption of the pressure at the best efficiency point, I would conclude that FEI is more lenient for smaller fan sizes. You can see how the colored lines dip lower to the left. And I'd also say that the levels of FEI 1 are slightly greater than the tier 1 requirements for axials and slightly less than the tier 1 levels for centrifugals. The red lines of FEI equals 1.1, which is the level we're using in the U.S. for higher efficiency energy codes, are pretty close to the tier two levels for each category. And that's how it compares to some other metrics. Now, Michael will wrap up with a 
quick look at the status of FEI codes in FEI and standards and codes in the U.S. Um, in terms of CANS codes, standards, and regulations, um, in the United States, we have state energy codes uh, dominate for, for uh, efficiency regulations uh, for codes. Um, there's no single national energy efficiency requirement for buildings. Um, we have model energy codes and standards that states adopt either ASHRAE 90.1 or International Energy Conservation Code. Uh, some states prefer to start their own code from scratch, like California, and that's Title 24. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. But for the model energy codes and standards that states adopt into their state energy code, uh, FEI is replacing FEG in the state energy codes because it's already replaced FEG in the model energy codes and standards. So starting in 2019, uh, FEI replaced FEG in ASHRAE 90.1. Uh, and then for the International Energy Conservation Code, effective 2021, FEI has replaced FEG in that as well. As I mentioned, the state um, or the federal energy efficiency requirement, that regulation is being postponed uh, for now. Uh, meanwhile, states can, absent of federal regulation, create a state regulation, and California is moving towards that. They have a draft FEI-based fan efficiency regulation uh, that's under different phases of uh, approval and refinement. Uh, we expect the next draft of that sometime in January 2021, but California is moving ahead with a fan efficiency regulation. Uh, in terms of the exact language that's used in the model energy codes and standards, I'm going to skip over that, uh, but it is worth mentioning that the International Energy Conservation Code, IECC, is different from ASHRAE and that it, re it requires independently verified or third-party certified FEI ratings. Uh, and towards that, AMCA does certify FE ratings predominantly by certifying manufacturer software. Uh, and the URL shown here provides an easy way to find where fans are currently certified. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Tim and Michael. So I'm wondering, yeah, we got two pictures here. Happy welcome. So uh, what time is it actually at your place? Early morning? Oh, you're both on mute. Sorry. Yeah, I got it. It's okay. uh, 6.30 a.m. in Colorado. Well, thank you very much huh, for getting up so early. And oh. I'm, I'm sure that uh, all the audience appreciates actually your input. Um, <clears throat> well, so I'm, I'm rather new to the fan uh, industry in that sense. I come from the motor industry. So I really appreciate the introduction to the Fan Energy Index. One thing in the presentation of uh, Tim, I, I was wondering, you, you showed that you know, the engineer who's doing the choice of, of what fan systems he's going to use, he's looking at cost. And um, I, it was my impression that cost was basically uh, capital expenditure at the beginning. You know? So there's no operating expenditure included, which I, I, if I remember right, the motor systems tool will do. But, um, does the, the, uh, the fan energy index somehow actually helps you in, with this regard, or you still have to think about what are the savings along the line, the return on investment, basically? Well, the, the fan energy index reflects the power consumed at the, at the design airflow and pressure. Mm -hmm. And so that, that will uh, uh, also reflect the power consumed throughout the life of the product. So yes. Um, so that's, that's basically one of the biggest uh, advantage of, of uh, yeah, the, the fan energy index. Yeah, yeah it's, it's related to energy, not, not related to cost. But, yeah. but to, your, to your other point, um, the, the decision makers are very, um, very conscious of cost. Cost is a, is a huge factor and, and a reason why the smaller fans get selected uh, far away from their peak efficiency point. Now we have a question from the uh, audience, and it's Peter Ratkin who asks, would the fan energy index be different for 50 or 60 hertz operation for the same product? Uh, if the, uh, I'll answer that, the, if the uh, motor used is uh, less efficient because it's 50 hertz, which it might be just just marginally less efficient, mm -hmm. uh, then that would be reflected in the FEI. Yes. 
is slightly lower FEI. Okay. But they would be very close, very close together. Yeah, because it's only in having an impact basically on the motor itself. Or, yeah. Or it would be the speed of right. the fan would also be different. Therefore, also a slight different difference. But yeah. Um, yeah. Another other technical question uh, is if the values are measured with standard temperature of 15 degrees Celsius and air pressure of 1013 hectopascals according to ISO 2533. Um, as they apply in aviation. This is from Christian Staudacher. So I, I guess he's asking about the conditions where you measure these fan energy index. Uh, we, well, typically they are um, published at, at standard air conditions, standard density. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the, um, if the fan is applied, the, the, the same fan applied at a different density, uh, higher elevation, will have very close to the same FEI value. It is calculated at the, the consumer's, uh, or it can be calculated at the consumer's uh, air density. But it, it, the, the same fan will have uh, very close to the same FEI value mm. at, at all different densities. Yeah, can I, can I uh, throw in a little bit here? Is that generally FEI ratings are going to be reported as a result of manufacturer sizing selection software where the uh, engineer or the end user uh, enters the uh, fan system design condition, the airflow pressure and density um, or elevation where the fan would be running. And then the software would return a number of selections that meet that criteria. And with that, you'll have different fan selections with different FEI values. And the user can then select the fan that meets the FEI requirement, uh, but also the other parameters that are important to the uh, system application. Mm. Who's actually providing the software doing the calculation? Is that something you do from, from um, AMCA or? No. Uh, AMCA does certify FEI ratings as part of mm -hmm. our certified ratings program. And generally, the way that it's been working is that, you know, manufacturers can either certify a particular product and, and that would be reflected in the product catalog, or they can certify their sizing selection software. And, and then the, the FEI ratings would be part of the outputs from running the sizing selection software. Mm -hmm. So generally, the FEI ratings are uh, reported by the manufacturers to their sizing selection software, which AMCA can certify. Then I have a last question here from the public here in the studio, which is a bit strange in a way, but I guess it's a sign of the times. So um, they ask if COVID-19 is having any impact on the fan industry, I guess uh, because of increased uh, requirements for air, um, uh, how you say, um, sanitation or so, and, and is, if you think that there will be an increased energy consumption due to this. Do you see any signs of that? Jim, you want me to jump on that a little bit? Yes, please do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think overall, uh, we, we we're analyzing US construction market characteristics and, and uh, we haven't found any noticeable trends per se in the construction trends. I know that some of our members have introduced what I would consider COVID intervention strategies, such as mobile air cleaners. But I would say that uh, looking at the ASHRAE epidemic task force recommendations for higher ventilation rates uh, and increased filtration levels up to like a minimum and MRF 13 where they can get it. Uh, I think that you, know, you will see higher ventilation rates uh, in buildings and therefore you would see higher energy consumption. But I think it's a little too early to tell um, to see exactly what the final impact will be. Uh, I, I think that some of the energy efficiency advocacy organizations are a little concerned about uh, COVID, uh, uh, more or less dialing back the energy savings that they've been getting from energy codes and standards. So I, I think there might be some a fine tuning of these recommendations over time. So we'll see what the long term impact is. Yeah, there might be an increase in, in energy consumption for, for ventilation, but there is a huge decrease, actually, if you look at the numbers here in, in Europe, for example, for energy consumption, for transportation, and, and yes. actually CO2 emissions are uh, really uh, drastically reduced during these uh, three months in spring. So uh, we'll see. I think this is not the main issue of COVID-19. Let's hope that we can get over it. Safety first. Yes. 
Thank you very much, Tim and Michael. That was very interesting. And thank you again for coming up so early for us here in Europe. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you.